Welcome to the third video on Windows 8 and Microsoft Surface. Um, we've already sort of covered the start page, some basic gestures, IE, and quickly went into maps. Um, today I want to focus on how to customize um, the, the start page of the device um, because I think it's important to, to make it work for you and they've, they've made it so that you can adjust a lot of different things on here. And so we'll go through as many of them as, as we can in, in five to, to seven, eight minutes. Um, something like that. And if I don't get through everything, then we can come back and I'll do another video in the future to cover the rest of them. Um, so as we've talked about in earlier videos, you have the surface, um, <laughs> the start page of the surface, which shows all the apps that you commonly use. Um, but you might want to move ones that you want to use more frequently up to the beginning. And the tiles can be moved simply by um, selecting them and dragging them. And so actually, I'm going to move one that I don't use every day, um, which is the store. And so you see, you select it, and then you just drag it over. And you can put it into whatever group you want. And so I've now put it into the second group here. I can take it from that one and, whoop, and then move it into the very last one if I want to, um, whatever whatever you're looking for. So that's one one thing to edit, so that you can you can move the move things between groups like that. Um, the, the, as I was saying before, one of the things I really like about the start page are these um, applications that have um, active content, so I can see it. And so I definitely want all the ones that have active content that I care about on the beginning page. And so you can see here, there's a couple things that are showing a little bit more content that I don't have on the top and are in that first section. So let's actually take the Bing one, because that is something I pay attention to, move that over into the start page so that now that is also on the first, first screen. Um, so the last thing that we can do here, uh, not last thing, another thing that we can do here is we can remove applications that we aren't going to be using all the time. So I have sports and travel on this center pane here, but I don't use them actually ever. And so I could just unpin them. I can select it here and see unpin from start. But because I never use it, I'm actually going to save myself a little bit of disk space as well and do an uninstall. And so it prompts me to make sure that I really want to do that. And the answer is yes, I do. Remove that one. Same thing with the, the sports one here. So we're going to uninstall that and remove it. And so now my, my desktop is a little bit smaller. I have, I have the stuff that I'm using. Pretty much everything on here now is stuff that I use at least, at least once in a while. Um, and so I want that on here. But that's not all we can do. Um, the other thing here is you can see some of these tiles don't have any active content. Um, but they're still, like the SkyDrive one, is still taking up all that space. And what we can do is we can select it in the context menu. There's an option for making it smaller. And so when I click on that one, you'll see now it's a little tile. And so I can put it together with something else that doesn't take, take up too much space. Um, let's experiment with the weather one here. So I like the fact it shows me information about where I'm at and all that. So what happens if I make that smaller? You can see it still gets the information. It now scrolls with something else. So I like that one. I'm going to keep it smaller too to save some space. But I'll take this maps and I'm going to move that down with the sky drive so that I can get more on the page. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go, hmm, let's say the photos. The photos one, I want that to be part of this other group. Um, but I actually want it to be right at the top of that one, so I'll put it right up there. I'm going to make the game smaller. And what else here? In video, I'm going to make that smaller as well. So now everything sort of fits nicely within those panes. So I've made the groups quite a bit smaller. I've removed a couple of rows now by doing that, but still have all the information that, that I use frequently on here. Um, so the other thing you want to do is you might want to like sort of indicate what the difference is between these pages. And so if you do the pinch one, it gives into this zoom mode that I showed in the first video. And you can actually select an entire group and give it a name. And so this one I'm going to call it active content. And when I name that, you'll see it shows up there in the top of the group, but also if I go back here, it also shows it up, up there, so active content. And then this group here, um, select it. In that group, I'm going to say um, frequently used. 
And then this last group, I'm just going to call it other for right now. Oops, caps lock was on. So now you can see each one has a name. And um, I'm willing to bet that as we use the applications more and more on this, there's going to be many more groups. And so the names can really sort of help, especially when you're taking a quick look at it. Um, but in the first video, I also showed how you could search for applications. And so if you did this to take a look at it, it would show it there. But you can even go one further, or sorry, where is it? Oh, sorry, I remember now. So if you go to the All Apps one, you can shrink that, and it will actually show you um, some other things you can go on here. So you can go and do a search and find them in the All Apps one. Um, so that's by doing a pinch. It then basically shows you a table of contents of the application. I was hoping it was going to show my groups there too, but it doesn't look like it does. Um, so the groups show up on, on these two pages only. So the other thing I think that's important to show in customization is adding an application. And to do that, you do that through the Microsoft Store. And one thing you might be worried about right away is that, yes, some of them do cost money, but you'll see here there's a tile for the top free. And for each of the apps here, you'll see right underneath it, it says if it's free or if it costs money. So Angry Birds Star Wars is $4.99. Um, the New York Times is free. Um, but if you want to see a list of the free ones, you can click on that tile and it will bring a list of, of all of the free ones. Now, this is going to show you a lot of stuff and so it is putting it in some order. I haven't quite figured out what it is yet, um, but there's a lot of these and so that might not be the, the most productive way to get to it. Um, so do you remember how I showed the charms menu last time by going from the right hand side? Well, let's do that again and do a search. Um, and one great thing about the search is it's built into all of these apps and pages pretty seamlessly. And so when you do a search here, it's not searching the whole internet, it's actually searching the store. And you can tell that because it's highlighted there. But let's say I want Tetris. Whoop. So do that again. So Tetris. And then hit enter. It's going to go through and it's going to find all the different Tetris versions that are out there. And you can see which ones are free and which ones cost, cost money. Um, so I'm going to try, let's try this one here. Uh, well, I'll try the first one. So when you click on that one, it's going to bring up a page that's going to show you a little bit more information about it, show you a video, or not a video, but a screenshot, tell you a little bit about it, and then the size right here, um, which is very reasonable. It's, it's very small. So I'm going to hit install on that one, and that's going to bring it down to my device. Um, now, while it's downloading, you don't have to wait on, on this screen. Um, you can actually go back to the, to the main one here. And what you um, will see on the, on the right-hand side here is it's adding a tile, and it says pending inside of it. And so until that, that stops saying pending or installed, it's not actually available to launch. You can see it gave me a little notification. Easy Tetris was installed. Um, so now I can sort of pick that, and I'm going to actually move it into my other category. Um, but now I have a Tetris game, and if I click on that, it's going to start it up. And now I can see what I, if I like it or not. If I don't, I can go back and close this off, go back to the front page, and as I was showing before, you can go and uninstall it. Um, so the free games really don't cost you anything <laughs> except a little bit of time. Um, and I have already purchased a couple of games myself just because I, I, I like them. Um, and it's worth the, the $5 to, to have um, Angry Birds or one of the other apps that you like. Um, so I'm going to cut it off here because I'm already up at nine minutes on the video, but I'll do another one in the future to go and show um, even more options for customizing. But I think this is the one that you get the most bang for your buck, is changing the tiles, adding tiles, um, organizing them so that they're easy to access, because this is sort of your, your main touch point um, um, with the Surface. So enjoy, and I'll catch you in the next video.